This is a message from my mum, so if you're not her, please keep scrolling. I'm kidding, I know you're probably not going to scroll, but oh well. Hi mum, how's it going? How's it hanging? Blah, 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 blah. Yeah, um, you know the other day when you told me that I was addicted to my phone and that, oh, you need to get out more and stop going on TikTok so much, you're going to get addicted. Well, don't think I don't see you with your Facebook and your Instagram. Seeing what Sheila and Jim have been doing over the weekend. Don't think I don't see that. You know, when you come over to me and sing like, Oh, look at Sheila's little child. I don't care about Sheila's little child. But it's the same thing as me checking up on my favorite TikTokers. You haven't even seen Sheila in like 20 years. Okay, bye. Last night, I was lying in bed. And I realized something. You know when... You hate your siblings, yeah, we all do. And then you're like, oh, well, you're the adopted one. And you don't really mean it, it's kind of a joke. But, like, my brother's actually adopted. <laughs> so, I'd be really mean if I went up to him and be like, oh, you're the adopted sibling. <laughs> I was in class on Zoom. I wanted to go to sleep, honestly, because like when I'm tired, I go to sleep. I end up falling asleep and then class ends and everyone starts leaving the class. Except me, because I was like in a whole other universe at this point. I was dreaming, I was flying. At this point, me and the teacher are alone in the call. This is the best part. <laughs> then the teacher starts talking to me and he's like, Samantha, wake up. Samantha, please. Samantha, you have another class. He woke me up, but I was half awake, so I didn't really know what was going on. So I thought it was my brother waking me up, and I straight up yelled. I was like, shut up, you fat booger. And so then I realized, oh shit, I just called my teacher a fat booger. And now he scheduled a parent conference. The most annoying person that could ever exist is that one kid that asks for homework. The teacher would be like, all right, it's the end of the lesson, class dismissed. And we would all be in a good mood because they forgot about assigning us work. But then, this stupid mother trucker would go like, uh, miss, what about the homework? <sighs> Benjamin, you little rat. Why would you do that? We got away with not having homework. Ugh. Then, the teacher gives like eight double-sided pages of work to do. Thanks a lot, Benjamin. So I used to know this girl who would constantly say things like, Guys, sorry, I'm so ugly. I just ruined the whole group photo, I'm sorry. And then everyone would automatically comfort her and be like, No, you're beautiful. You shine. And then she would be like, No, but thank you. And she would do the same thing over and over again, trying to get everyone's attention. So eventually, I got tired. So the next time she came to me saying, I'm so ugly, I was like, <laughs> You know what? You are. She was like, what'd you say? And I was like, bitch, if you think you're ugly, I can crop you out of the photo. The fuck do you want me to tell you? I'm not the one who made you look like a woolly mammoth. Hi, it's Patricia, and um, I'm gonna get payback from Felicia, because you guys should know, like the last video, where P Felicia pushed me with the while I was on my wheelchair into the pool. So now I'm gonna get payback from her, and I've got an egg now. So my egg. Can't wait, well, we can't hear it, but this is my egg, and Felicia's just sitting on the couch in the next room, so I'm just gonna walk in. Okay, so guys, I'm in Patricia's room. I'm about to walk in and I'm about to put the egg on her head. You ready, guys? Oh, I'm so, so excited. Okay, three, two, one. Oh, my God! Oh, my God! No, because why are those robot tests actually so annoying and hard? You know, when a website tells you something and you have to click the boxes with that object. Anyways, I'm not a robot, right? I hope. But when a website comes up to me, like, click the clouds in the sky, and I'm just sitting there, like, huh? What? Clouds? The sky is literally clear blue. So, I see something small and white, like my brother's pe and it says stuff like, sorry, try again. Um, I literally pressed a cloud, what are you on about? So then I can't go into a website because it thinks I'm a stupid machine. The most annoying thing ever is when you have something really important or exciting to do. So you go do it, but on the way you get distracted. And when you carry on walking into the room again, you're just standing there like, what was I supposed to do again? 
And literally, the more you think about it, try to remember, the more you forget, and then you're just mad at yourself for the rest of the night. This happened to my sister last night. So she comes into my room, right? And then it literally looks like she's possessed or something because she just stared at my wall for like two minutes and walked out without saying anything. Like, what? Y'all, so I got a crush. And I'm gonna give y'all three hints and see if y'all can get it. First one is they can breathe. <laughs> oh my god, y'all gonna get it. They eat food. This one about to be a dead giveaway. Oh my god. They got ankles. Hello, you know who it is. It's me. What's up? What's good? Hi, how you doing? Yeah. So, uh, I said that this video was gonna be a name reveal. Um, doubt anyone really cares what my name is, but my name's Kaylee. It's spelled like this. Boom, it's on the screen. I know. It looks like Celia. Don't bully me. No, my name is Kaylee. Stop. Um, yeah, and also, someone asked me if I like, like art, and I do. I, I do. Um, I will show you some of my, like, favourite things that I've done on the screen now. Um, boom, there's one. Boom, there's another. Boom, there's another. Um, this is gonna really test my editing skills. But yeah, that's some of my art. Um. Hi, I'm Ethan from Canada. Please, like and subscribe. Ever since I could remember, I lived with my uncle, who loved me like I was his own son. And I adored him too. He owned an auto company. And when I was five, he took me to a showroom one day and showed me all the beautiful cars he owned. Can I drive this one, uncle? <laughs> one day you will, son, as soon as you're tall enough. I wanted to make my uncle proud of me, so I studied hard and always got straight A's. Uncle would be over the moon seeing my results, and he'd tell me that I'd take over his business one day. I was thrilled to hear that, because I loved cars. But suddenly, everything changed in the fifth grade. My uncle introduced me to Giselle, a tall woman, with a really long nose. Aww, you must be the nephew. So cute. She pinched my cheeks, and when my uncle wasn't looking, she smirked at me. I didn't like her at all, but my uncle seemed to love her, because two months later, he married her. Giselle had a son my age, Jeremy, and he was the slowest boy I'd ever met. On his first day of school, uncle and I were waiting for him to finish eating his cereal, and he took a minute to chew each Fruit Loop. We're gonna be late, can't you chew any faster? He then took the bowl and tried to drink down his cereal, but ended up messing his clothes. Ethan, look what you made Jeremy do. Now you'll both be so late for school. How is it my fault? Well, I can't wait any longer. So you take them to school, Giselle. We got to school two hours late that day. To make things worse, Jeremy was a real embarrassment. He sat in class with snot running down his nose and didn't even realize it till one of the mean boys in class saw him. <laughs> Look everyone, the new guy has some disgusting goo on his face. <laughs> the entire class burst out laughing. And then Jessica, one of the prettiest and richest girls in the school, handed Jeremy a tissue and frowned at the mean boy. Why do you always have to be so rude? Leave the poor guy alone. Later that day, I caught up with Jessica and thanked her for standing up for Jeremy. I just don't understand mean people. It's so much easier to be kind. Well, it's not easy for everyone. You're just one of the kindest people around. Aw, uh, thank you, Ethan. She kissed my cheek and ran off. I liked her ever since we were little kids. So that kiss gave me butterflies in my tummy. As time went by, I found myself taking care of Jeremy like I was his babysitter, because Giselle kept asking me to help him. Like when we were in the eighth grade, Jeremy was failing his subjects miserably, and every day after school I had to tutor him, which wasn't easy. So when you're breaking down a sum, this is how you do it. Instead of listening to me, he'd be playing on his phone. Yeah, yeah. Can we please focus on homework right now? Oh, yeah. What were you saying? He was a frustrating student. But I kept trying because I kind of felt sorry for him. Without some help, his future was doomed. But even though I made so much effort with Jeremy, Giselle never appreciated it and was always unpleasant with me. Like once at dinner, when I wanted a second helping of food, she looked at me like a witch. So greedy. You should feel lucky that you're even eating with us at the same table. What's that supposed to mean? You'll see one day. She would speak in such riddles often, but always when uncle wasn't around. And then one day in the 10th grade, I came home to the worst news ever. Giselle told me that uncle had been arrested for fraud. I, I just didn't believe it. My uncle was no criminal, but apparently he'd been stealing money from his biggest investor and he was sentenced to jail for 10 years. I wanted to see him, but Giselle said only she had visiting rights as his wife. 
I was <laughs> devastated, but Giselle seemed over the moon. Just one day after Uncle's sentence, she invited her friends over and stayed up all night, laughing and dancing to loud music. And just two days later, I got back from school to find out she had moved all my stuff to the attic. Why did you do this? That room was just too big for a boy like you. So Jeremy will be moving in there now. I'm moving my stuff back. Listen here, you poor rat. I'm in charge now, and what I say goes. You're gonna pay for this. She laughed out like a witch, and then suddenly slipped and fell down a couple of stairs on her butt. <laughs> I told you, you'll pay for this. I made myself comfortable in the attic, but as days passed, things got worse for me. I was no longer allowed to eat at the dinner table or watch TV in the lounge. Giselle fired our butler, saying it was too expensive to pay him. So she gave me and Jeremy chores, but I seemed to be the one doing all of them. Jeremy was still a weird guy, but he wasn't evil like his mom. One day, he brought me some dessert to the attic. I'm really sorry about the way my mom treats you. It's okay, bro. I won't live here forever. When I'm done with school, I'll leave and live my life. Giselle even stopped driving me to school, and Jeremy would roll down his car window and watch me walk till I was left far behind. I knew he felt bad, but I understood he wasn't strong enough to stand up for me. One day in 11th grade, I was walking to school when I noticed an old man fixing some broken down cars, and a sign next to him said that he was looking for a part-time assistant. Can I apply for this job? Oh, and what do you know about cars? Quite a lot. My uncle taught me everything. The old man tested me and was quite impressed by my knowledge. He hired me and I was so happy because of course, Giselle had stopped my allowance. One afternoon, he sent me to a rich man's house to fix his Ferrari. It was more like a palace. While I was fixing the car, I started getting hot so I took off my shirt. Moments later, <laughs> I heard giggling from behind a wall and I peeked around and found Jessica there. Jessica, you live here? Yes, this is my house. You fix cars? She kept looking at my abs, and I could swear she was blushing slightly. Yeah, this is my part-time job. Cool. You want to take a break and have a soda with me? Yeah, that would be cool. I couldn't believe that I was at Jessica's house, hanging out with her. I had given up trying to speak with her ages ago, because she was always surrounded by the most popular guys in school. I don't see you much in school these days. I'm usually at the library studying hard so that I can get a scholarship. You haven't changed a bit. You're still the same sweet nerd boy. Nerd boy? I did say sweet too. Come on, I want to show you something. She took me to a cottage at the back, which was a nursery for the plants and flowers. This is what I love doing, being around nature. Wow, this is amazing. But then suddenly, she screamed and practically jumped into my arms. W what is it? A, a lizard! But that's part of nature, isn't it? I only love plants, not creepy crawlies. I laughed picked up the lizard, and made it crawl away in a different direction. When I turned around, she was standing right behind me, and her face was so close to mine. My heart raced as I looked at her lips, but suddenly her dad called for her. As he saw us coming out of the cottage, he looked at me, sternly. I just couldn't stop thinking about Jessica. The next day when I saw her in school, my heart skipped a beat when she smiled at me. But then all of a sudden, Jeremy came up behind me. Hey, why is Jessica looking at you that way? I don't know, maybe she likes me. When I said that, Jeremy's expression changed. Well, that can't be, because I loved her since the day I joined this school. While Jeremy was talking about his feelings, Jessica suddenly approached me and asked if I'd help her with math during recess. I gladly said yes, but Jeremy glared at me like his mother. When I got home that day, Giselle called me to the living room. Her eyes were blazing. Jeremy tells me you stole his girlfriend. Who, Jessica? She's never been his girlfriend. I hear that your father's very rich. You're thinking of getting your hands on that pot of gold, aren't you? No, Giselle. Not everyone's a gold digger like you. How dare you talk to me like that? 
You're grounded, and I forbid you to see this girl. As long as you live under my roof, you'll live by my rules. This is not your roof. It's my uncle's. The next day, while I was with Jessica at recess, Jeremy came and told me to take off the shirt I was wearing because he'd given it to me and wanted it back now. I told him to buzz off, and then he pounced on me. But I was way stronger than him and pinned him down. Calm down, dude. This is not who you are. You are not a monster like your mother. Maybe I am. And don't talk about my mother that way. I let him go, and he stormed off furiously. Hey, are you okay? I leaned forward and kissed her. Now I think I'll be okay. Jessica and I started seeing each other more often, and I didn't care about how Jeremy and his mother treated me. Soon it was the end of 12th grade, and prom was around the corner. I decided to surprise Jessica by turning up at her place with some flowers and asking her out to prom. But when I got there, I was shocked to find her in the living room with her dad, along with Jeremy and Giselle. What are you guys doing here? The question is, boy, what are you doing here? I'm here to ask my girlfriend to prom, sir. Are you sure you're at the right house? Because my daughter just said yes to being Jeremy's fiance. I couldn't believe my ears. I looked at Jessica, but she just looked back at me with a frozen face. I need to speak to you alone, Jessica. There's no need, Ethan. You heard what my father said, and I agree. It's a good match. I think you should go now and leave me alone. dad had guards throw me out of their house. I was utterly heartbroken. She changed her mind about me because I was poor? As I laid awake that night, the attic door creaked open. It was Jeremy. So, how does it feel, Ethan? You always thought you were better than me, right? But look at me now. I'm the master of this house, and I own the heart of the girl you love. Before I could stop myself, I'd flown at Jeremy and punched his face. I obviously couldn't stay there anymore, so I took my savings and my things and left that very night. The old man I worked for let me stay at his garage for a few months, till I got into university on scholarship and left. A year later, as I was walking out of college campus, I was completely shocked to see Uncle standing outside. Oh my god, you're free! I missed you so much, Uncle! How come you never came to visit me, son? G Giselle told me that I wasn't allowed. She was lying. I was in jail because of her. She framed me for fraud and had me thrown in jail. But my lawyers had found proof of her guilt, and soon, she will be behind bars. And so she was. It was the happiest day of my life when she got arrested. And Jeremy was sent off to live with relatives in another city. My uncle and I moved back to our house, and I continued with my engineering degree. And then one day, as I was fixing a car in uncle's garage, I turned around to see Jessica walk in. Oh, it's you. Can I help you with anything? Ethan, I'm so sorry. Oh, you're sorry now, because I'm rich. No, it's not like that. Giselle threatened to do something bad to you if I didn't break up with you. I never meant to be with Jeremy, but I had to do something to drive you away from here. What? Why didn't you just tell me this? I was scared. For you. She started crying, and I wrapped my arms around her, and told her it was all over. So do you think you can give me another chance? Of course. I've loved you since forever, Jessica. You're the best person I know. <laughs> 